Hello everyone, welcome back to my career mode let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 and in this episode we need to build up the science in order to save Valentina. Now Valentina is currently stranded in a very high orbit around Kerbin and we would like to rescue her before she gets perturbed by the moon for instance because if we take a look at her orbit it's quite possible that um, it, it might fly by the moon again, right? Uh, let's say it encounters the moon, she encounters the moon right about there, and then the moon decides to fling her out into interplanetary space or smash her into something. We never know. And so we would like to avoid that at all costs. And that means getting to her relatively quickly. But we don't have the technology to do that just yet. We have a lot of things that we would like to have before we you know, risk another Kerbal on that sort of mission. Actually, we don't have to uh, risk another Kerbal on that sort of mission. If we could unlock electrics, this probe core would help marvelously at uh, helping us control the vessel so that we can just use the Mark 1 command pod and that little probe core can control the command pod which would be empty until Valentina occupies it. So that would be a good way to rescue Valentina or we could have uh, uh, two Kerbal pod and we have those with the Making History DLC uh, here in Flight Control this pod has two Kerbals in and so we could send one Kerbal up to rescue Valentina and have Valentina occupy the second slot but not clear that's the best option especially since we don't have fairings and this uh, would cause quite a lot of drag so those are the considerations right now also, we have to decide what we might want to unlock. Uh, the launch pad to get a uh, max weight of more than 18 tons. The astronaut complex, 150,000, but then we can do EVAs, which gets us a lot of science. Um, here, tracking station, 300,000, so we can see our patched conics, so what happens when we encounter a different planetary body. Or uh, mission control, uh, it's... Uh, uh, especially in conjunction with the with the tracking station is helpful but I don't think that's the priority right now taking a look at mission control though I noticed one interesting contract test the LV-909 Terrier in a suborbital trajectory around the moon now uh, the Terrier is a very important engine because it's very efficient and it's much better at being an upper stage engine than the LVT-45 or LVT-30 it's lighter it's more efficient and it has about the right amount of thrust anyway. So we would like this engine and if we look at the research and development building we would have to unlock this technology to get the engine but this technology is only about 12 sciences away, 12 data, whatever you want to call it. So maybe we should just aim to unlock it because I can't guarantee that you guys watching will get this particular contract. And but that said it's an interesting contract. I don't mind this contract. And it'll get us additional funds. So maybe I'll just pick it up because we'll do it anyway. We'll pick that up and we'll pick up this Explore the Moon contract which asks us to orbit the moon and gather scientific data from the moon and return to Kerbin from orbit. So now we have a boatload of cash and that's a good start but first in order to get that extra 12 science so that we unlock this technology so that you have the engine too so once once they uh, give you a contract like that to test an engine they give you the engine to, to test obviously even though you haven't unlocked the technology that's one of the nice things about about uh, taking those particular missions see we have this engine even though we haven't researched it yet and it says experimental but Again, I can't guarantee that you get that contract, so I'll just unlock it the normal way. And so in order to do that, we have the Gamma 3 here. And the Gamma 3 is developed on the Gamma 2, which performed pretty well, even though we didn't have gimbling down here, even though we don't have fins. We were only controlling it with the reaction wheel up here. Um, so we can use it again. It's not that expensive. And I decided to put some goo containers, because is cool and it'll get us some science. So the goal here is just to maybe maybe a smaller rocket would do but I like this rocket because it worked. 
I mean, it worked right up till the end where it didn't work so much, but I can't but help feel that if we just dumped a little bit of a blature, it would have been able to get Valentina back to Kerbin safely. So, I don't know. Anyway, uh, we will launch this with Jeb, of course, and it'll have plenty of fuel margin. We just want to do some goo experiments. So, yeah, let's go with that. We could do the launch pad experiments, but let's save that for even more of an emergency. Um, yeah, when, like, we can't launch anything. And launch. Oh, SAS too. Always remember SAS. Let's start tilting. So right about there is fine and then hold prograde. And then we'll see how it is at 45 degrees, whether it's above or below 15 kilometers. I feel like it's pitching a little bit too fast, so stability assist instead. And we, we just go to the upper end of the prograde range. But we don't have too much authority here. No gimbling, right? So we're just gonna have to go with the flow. Okay, staging. Whoa, whoa, don't flip, don't flip. Obviously, when we're seeing these kinds of flame effects, that's some drag. That's some drag we're dealing with. Okay, that's a good start, though. Let's do some atmospheric goo. Will it be enough to... Well, 5.4 science. If the space goo is more than 6.6, .6, it should be good enough. So let's keep that. I wonder if there's a different crew report here. Yes, there is, because the crew report... Uh, we hadn't done upper atmosphere before, so let's keep that. Now, obviously, this would not be a very helpful orbit to encounter Val with. Val is in that orbit, which is rough. That's rough. And so it would take a lot for us to get this orbit into a situation to help Val out. Not impossible, but still difficult. Okay. And we have a 80 by 89 orbit. Plenty of fuel left, of course. Let's do some more goo. Okay, that's only six, six science, unfortunately. But we did get the extra from the crew report, so we should have enough. If you want to change view, by the way, this isn't the best view for re-entry. You press V and the free camera is probably the better one. So let's see if our goo containers strapped on like this are gonna survive re-entry. They are sort of sticking out and might get hot. Well we're gonna splash down again it looks like which is a sort of a shame because we could have gotten a little bit of extra science if we hit land. Maybe we'll reach that coast there. Okay, no problems. And yes, it does look like we're going to set down on land. Hopefully away from that bumpy ridge. Should have put thermometer and barometer on here as well. I decided not to. But we could have got a little bit of extra science here. The thermometer, barometer, and other scientific instruments cost a lot actually in the VAB, but you do bring them back most of the time, so that makes up for it. I mean, at least early on. Some of the science probes that you send out, you won't be bringing back, so. Then you, then the cost really hits you. Okay, well, uh, well, we can't get a new crew report just yet. Let's EVA. It only lets you store one crew report, so we have to take data. We'll get a, oh, we can't do a crew report like that. Okay, uh, crew report, keep that. Okay, EVA again, set down to the ground. Oh, come on. Uh, EVA report, keep that. We can't take surface samples just yet. That has to be unlocked with the building. Board, stored, and that's good enough. All right, recover vessel. Okay, 16.6 .6 science earned. And we got some refunds. And Jeb didn't gain more experience because that was a pretty mundane mission altogether. But advanced rocketry, we can now research this. 
and so you would have the engine too. Uh, let's purchase that one. Well, I'll just go into the VAB to do that. So what is the benefit of the Terrier engine? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's set this first stage aside for a sec. And this Terry engine shouldn't be experimental anymore, but it's all complicated. Uh, note that it has 6 tons of vacuum thrust, 60 kilonewtons, and a 345 vacuum ISP compared to the Reliance 310 and the Swivel's 320. If you're unclear about what ISP is, basically it's measured in seconds, and it's the amount of time that it takes for this engine to burn one ton of fuel uh, with a particular thrust. So it'll take it uh, 345 seconds, given the same amount of thrust level as the Reliant engine. This one will consume the fuel in 345 seconds, this one will consume the fuel in 310. So this one is more efficient because it, it gives you the same amount of thrust for longer with a single ton of fuel. It's, it's a little bit complicated, but basically that's what it is. So it's your fuel efficiency, and it this engine does gimbal, but it's, it's supposed to carry 6 tons, which is great because we know that the optimized upper stage for this would be a stage with 6 tons of fuel. And the mass of this is only 0.5 tons, and it's cheaper too. Uh, the mass of this is 1.25 tons, this one is 1.5 tons, these are both more than double the cost of the Terrier engine. So we definitely want the Terrier engine. Now. With the tanks and the pod and all, this stage is more than 6 tons, it's 7.325 tons. But that's not a problem, because it's not the launch engine, it's not the one that gets us off the ground. And by the time we're in flight, by the time this stage is through, this engine will be just fine. Um, on upper stage engines you can get it with 0.9 or even less, but I'd say 0.6 thrust to weight ratio, in other words, if you take um, that divide by 10, uh, so 6 tons, divide by your mass, and it's like really low. If, if we were like 12 tons here, there's no way. I, I would not want to do that because it's still being used in the atmosphere. In space, it's fine. If we had like another stage here that was only being used for space, then it, it'd be fine to have a thrust weight ratio as low as you want it. As much patience as you've got. The only situation where you need to worry about how much your thrust to weight ratio is, which means how much tonnage it can actually lift off the ground, is when it's getting off the ground. So this is a valid uh, arrangement here. We could add the extra ton of fuel here and remove that tank there. And that would be an interesting rocket. Or we could move that tank back down uh, just to make sure that by the time we light this engine we're far enough into our our launch so that's a question mark but let's take these off and this time I'm going to try and send oh and we could use these tanks to limit our part count but part count isn't a problem right now I I don't know maybe should we launch Jeb to the moon it seems like it would risk stranding Jeb unless we unlock the tracking station. Now, we've got some money here. We've got some money here. And this launch is going to, only going to cost 7,000. And this staging is a problem. We want that engine there. Save. And maybe it is time to unlock the tracking station upgrade. You know what though? I think it'd be more interesting to see the value of the Terrier engine on a one-to-one -one basis. In other words, we're going to conduct the same mission as it was before, and we're going to see how important the Terrier engine really is without getting the tracking station upgrade. It's a risk to Jeb, but I think we have a lot of Delta V, a lot more Delta V than we had on the previous mission with Val, and we'll be able to see that very clearly. So we're at 17.5 tons, and let's put some science on. We will try to get close to the moon. In fact, I think we can get to lunar orbit. So we're going to try and get into orbit around the moon and see if that works out. But we're going to do that with the thermometer and barometer this time. We're not going to duplicate Val's efforts even though even though Val is uh, not coming back soon. 
Perhaps we should unlock the EVAs, though. That wasn't too expensive, was it? Let's see. 150,000. I feel like that would be helpful. Let's unlock that. Okay, so now we can't unlock the tracking station upgrade until we do a mission to get more funds. What becomes readily apparent is that anytime you can cut down on the dry mass of a stage, like the weight of the tanks or the weight of an engine, that's going to help tremendously as far as your performance. So here we go, SAS on, and launch. Now again, our upper stage is not very powerful, so we have to take that into consideration. Let's not turn too quickly like we did last time. Eventually, once we get the tracking station upgrade, you'll be able to see your time to apoapsis on the flight map. And that time to apoapsis is probably the best way to gauge whether you're steep enough for your upper stages or whether you're too steep even before you hit space and all. Now this engine gimbals, so that's good. And you can see we barely uh, continue to accelerate here. It's actually nice to have a low thrust weight ratio upper stage because now our apoapsis isn't going to go out of control and reach space too quickly. And you can see we're still following the prograde vector a little bit more smoothly. The LVT-45 really wasn't a very good choice for an upper stage engine. I feel like we're not going up enough, so I'm going to go to stability assist and tilt up a little bit more. You can see it's taking this engine a much longer time to accelerate us to orbit, but that's good in a way. Okay, our apoapsis is creeping away from us. And what's going to happen is we're going to have one end in space and the other end still in the atmosphere, which is sort of what happened with the other launches anyway, but the close to apoapsis is going to be longer. So we've got A9 there. Actually, it's still crashing in the ground there. So we still have a close to apoapsis, but it's much closer to being a single continuous burn with this engine. So let's complete orbit first. Actually, we could take a peek at where the moon is. Um, we might be completing orbit right before we see the moon pop up above the horizon. Now one thing to watch out for with the LV-909, the Terrier engine, is I don't think it replenishes your electric charge. I forget if it does. Um, it doesn't have an alternator on it, so I don't think it does. So you're going to have to watch your electric charge a little bit more. But anyway, here we are in orbit. Let's take a look. It looks like we have two tons of fuel. Remember, 90 is one ton, so 180 is two tons. And what is our total mass? 4.39. So I'm going to quickly calculate it out for you, how much delta V we have. Remember, the previous mission, which almost got fell back, had about 1,000 at this point. Currently, we have 2,158 meters per second. So we have double the delta V that we had with the previous mission with Val. So I think we can comfortably assume that we can get to the moon. Let's see, is the moon peaking up yet? Yeah, oh well, we're a little bit late, but I think it's okay. Let's go for it. So that's why I think that this mission not only can fly by the moon, but can actually get into orbit around the moon. But we can't plan ahead. We don't have flight planning or the patched conics yet. I still haven't put transmitters on my missions someday. Okay, let's continue burning. Last time just hitting 11,400 was a bit crashy into the Mooney, so let's go a little bit beyond that. Let's go 11,500, shall we say? Depends on the timing of it though. Note that going a little bit further gave the moon a little bit more time to catch up as well. And there we go. And this time we do have a proper periapsis instead of crashing into the moon. But that's a little bit high. I would like it closer. And if you remember how to get closer is the radial in vector. Keep an eye on the electric charge though. Remember the reaction wheels take electric charge. So this is the radial in vector and I want it closer to the moon now. Let's say, uh, well, maybe 40 kilometers tops. 
Okay, that's good. And now, in order to make orbit around a new body like this, like the moon, you go to periapsis, and then you burn retrograde until you make an orbit. Right now, we're just going to be passing by the moon and getting shot out again, and that's called a flyby. What we want to do is be here, point retrograde. And that electric charge is still worrisome. And then burn retrograde. And you can see the orbit folding up and then turning into an ellipse and the ellipse coming down. We can stay high up here. I think it'll count. Let's see. Um, orbit the moon. Stable orbit around the moon. Does it... Doesn't seem to be happy with it. But maybe we're getting shot out and we just can't see it. So let's bring it down further. Remember, we can't see what's happening with Kerbin right now. Okay, there we go. That's what I consider as a stable, stable orbit. Fair enough. Okay, gather scientific data from the moon. Okay, well, we're close to the moon now. Uh, let's EVA for the first time. <laughs> we, we don't EVA for the first time around Kerbin. We do it around the moon. That's our style. Okay, board. And we can do a lot of EVA reports because you can see it says from space just above the moon's east crater. But there are a lot of different biomes on the surface of the moon that we could be over. And so we can get a lot of science. This is 21.6 science. Keep that. And we can log temperature. This is near the moon. Keep that. Now, when your Kerbal goes out, SAS will disengage. So now we're starting to sort of automatically rotate a bit. But that's fine. That means electric charge won't get consumed in the meanwhile. We can have our Kerbal exit again and maybe do a new EVA report. It's Highlands now, so that's good. Keep that. And also, let's grab the experiments, take data from the thermometer, take data from the barometer. Oh, uh, take data, sorry. And then board. And now they're clear so that we can do more thermometer and barometer readings. Also, we might as well do a crew report close to the moon as well. OK. Now, while we won't, I guess, I don't know. I'm somewhat tempted to duplicate uh, Valentina's efforts around the moon now. Uh, let's get into a somewhat tighter orbit. I'm not comfortable with our current situation, actually. This is not at periapsis, so if we burn here retrograde, our periapsis goes down as well as our apoapsis. That's the downside. It's also not as efficient. Let's go around again and make it nice and circular, maybe. It's not necessary, though. Maybe maybe I shouldn't overdo things. Especially since we can't really see what happens when we get back. So, let's leave it be. And I'm not going to do any more science for now. We'll be back. So, in order to return home from the moon, if you're going around counterclockwise as we are, you're going to burn at around 11 o'clock over here. If you're going around clockwise, that way around, or retrograde, it's also called. Counterclockwise is called prograde around a body, and then uh, clockwise is called retrograde. And that's because of, you know, uh, how the planets rotate. Uh, of course, if they're rotating a little bit differently, then it'll change. But in any case, if you're going around counterclockwise, burn a 11 o'clock ish, right around here. And when I say clock, I mean the moon is going in this direction right here. And so. It's, uh, this is 12 o'clock, the direction that the moon is moving in. Then 11 o'clock is where you want to burn. And then 1 o'clock if you're in an orbit that's going around clockwise. So around here, if we were going around in the opposite direction. Now the fact that we're in sort of a lopsided orbit right now, an elliptical orbit, complicates matters. But we'll find out the details once we get into Kerbin space. So right around here-ish, I want to point prograde, and we will attempt to break orbit. We could end up spit out into interplanetary space, so we got to watch out. I think this will already get us into Kerbin orbit, even though it hasn't split this elliptic uh, ellipse yet. Yeah. So it's a good thing we didn't uh, go too far there, otherwise we might be spit out into some other... We might be in orbit around the sun by then. So this is good. And we should be approaching the apoapsis. And again, at apoapsis is the right place to bring down our periapsis. 
Uh, periapsis looks lower than it was for Val anyway, and we still f have quite a lot of fuel. And our goal with this is to unlock the science necessary for the um, probe core. That probe core that will help us recover Val. But we might need more science than I gathered on this particular mission where I was trying to play it safe and wanted to make sure that we got Jeb back. After all, Jeb and Val are our only two pilots, and we don't want to lose both. So, on the on basically the same rocket, we just swapped out the LVT-45 of the Terrier, and you can see how much more margin we have on all our missions. This is why the Terrier is very important, and certainly worth aiming for. One of the more important things in the tech tree. Now the question is, is our AT ablator sufficient? Well, we could do a number of things to ensure it is. For instance, once we get to periapsis, we can bring our apoapsis down again. And that'll slow us down. We've got some fuel left over. But I do want to test a uh, full return from the moon to see if AT ablator is about right. So we are not going to use the fuel that we have to slow ourselves down before entering the atmosphere. Okay. Whoa, very nimble now. We could probably have carried goo to the moon too. Going to free camera. We still have half our electric charge, but again, it's definitely worth paying attention to that. Uh, uh, we've done log temperature? No, we haven't. Log temperature. Log pressure. There's a lot of signs that I've been sort of neglecting, I know. So we do see an overheating indicator on the heat shield. Okay, we're through the worst of it. And it looks like we used about 40 ablator. Probably a good idea to keep a little bit more than 40 just as buffer, but basically 40 of later was what we used. And what's the terrain we're coming down on? Ooh, looks a little bit bumpy, doesn't it? Well, let's see if Jeb can deal with that. Okay, parachute time. Technically, we could EVA Jeb and have him hang off to the side and do an in-flight sort of thing, but... We, we care about our Kerbals. Do an in-flight EVA report. We'll save that for desperation too. He's just been back from the moon, you know. Let's be careful with him. Uh, we will EVA him on the ground here. Um, EVA report from Kerbin's Highlands. I, well, we'll just go with that. And crew report. Um... EVA, take data, board, um, crew report. Okay, keep. I suppose we could do the temperature scan from here too. Probably not going to do it some other time. Okay, so log temperature, log pressure. All right, and then we're done. Let's recover vessel. So, 101.3 science earned. Well, that's excellent, obviously. We fulfilled the contract, yes. Uh, yep, Explorer Moon has been fulfilled. We haven't tested a Terrier in a suborbital trajectory around the moon, but actually we could pretty easily, it seems. We have the margins for that. We, we'll just temporarily bring it into a landing trajectory and then boost it back up again. We can do that, but we'll save that for another occasion, maybe when we actually want to land. We did uh, land very far away from the KSC, so we didn't. We only got 22.7% of the total value of our parts back. So that's downside, but Jeb got a lot of experience, 3 XP. So good times. Let's take a look at our tech tree. Um, basic science, well, we still can't get electrics right away. We can get this basic science here, which will be helpful. It has batteries and has another science experiment for us. Also radiators, though it's not entirely clear what we would use that for just yet. Uh, we need about nine science to get this electrics, and perhaps that's something for the next episode. 
we've done two launches mainly to get science and also to explore the moon and get into orbit around the moon for the first time and uh, we have discovered how to do that but in order to rescue Val I want this part and perhaps some solar panels too and then we can perhaps mount a rendezvous with Val and see what happens so yeah maybe next time the first thing we're going to do is get a little bit more science and then try our first attempt to re rescue Val otherwise my voice is going a little bit so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like and I'll see you next time